Hey everyone. So this video is dedicated to those in the Webflow community who are looking for a way to approach their existing or potential clients in order to bring them over from WordPress into Webflow. All right, so whenever I get this type of question, I always talk about three major points. One, site speed and security. Two, the plugins and code cleanliness. And three, the ease of use in order to maintain, uh, in order for a client to maintain their own site. All right. So number one, site speed and security. When it comes to Webflow hosted sites, sites are backed up on Amazon web servers. So immediately your clients gain that, uh, that security. Okay. If Amazon web servers go down, uh, there's a bigger problem in the world. All right. Um, and when it comes to site speed, uh, once you press publish on a Webflow hosted site, that uh, all, all the assets, all the code gets sent over to Fastly.com, which is a content delivery network, which has points of presence all over the world. And what that means is if a client's client or a user visits your client's website, uh, they go to the nearest server based on where they're located, all right? This is not um, one server farm somewhere uh, in the United States. No, these are points of presence everywhere, all right? Uh, now, talk about number two, plugins and the code cleanliness. Now, I know that uh, WordPress has a huge plugin community, lots of plugins out there, and Webflow, comparatively, doesn't, right? Everything... Uh, on the WordPress platform is open source. Anyone can make a plugin. Whereas Webflow, everything is still closed, meaning that our internal team, our internal engineers are the ones who are coding these plugins so you can drag them onto your page. So the plugins are like the nav bar component, so the Google map, uh, tab sliders, etc. So that's what I'm talking about. But when you compare uh, the two things, uh, Yes, you can put so many things inside of uh, a WordPress hosted site, but that means you're taking code uh, from anyone, like whoever authored that plugin, they can put whatever they want. Now, if you buy a plugin, a premium plugin, Yes, those are much more clean, whereas free ones, you don't know if the code is clean or not. And, and there are plugins out there that are huge that they add so much uh, custom code to a site that it can make a site go slower. Plus, when it comes time to update those uh, plugins, especially if the WordPress, uh, the WordPress install needs to be upgraded, you have to then upgrade the WordPress install and then all the plugins and hope and hope that nothing breaks. Whereas Webflow plugins, or components, they're maintained by our team. And that way, whenever something gets upgraded, all the components are checked as well. So you don't have to worry about that. And in the future, our CEO, Vlad, has mentioned this a couple times, but we are looking into opening the doors for a bigger plugin marketplace so people can create their own plugins and put it into Webflow. However, again, code cleanliness. We want to make sure that if someone creates a uh, if someone creates a plugin, that it has to go through some sort of uh, code code review or something like that. I mean, okay, so this is just me thinking. This is not official words. This is just me thinking out loud. Like this is this is probably how we're gonna go, because if you look at other. Uh, other places that open the door for developers like the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store, if you're a developer, you have to submit it there before it gets out to the community. And before it gets there, there's a code review. There is a, you know, so there's a people at the gate saying, okay, is this clean? There's no viruses. Okay, we're good. Go ahead and give it to the community. So that's what I'm thinking we'll do. But again, this is not official word. So yeah, plugins on WordPress versus uh, Webflow. And uh, lastly on plugins, uh, I looked and um, I looked for the top used plugins on WordPress and 
right now, uh, there's, let me see, one, two, three, well, okay, I found seven, and comparing that to Webflow, you can already do a lot of this stuff inside of Webflow. For example, contact form seven, you can make your own forms in Webflow. Yoast SEO, SEO is baked into Webflow, and if you need to add like schema or open graph, I mean, it's already in there, or you can add custom code to each page. Uh, uh, ask you met, Akis met anti spam recapture on Webflow. WooCommerce, Webflow has e commerce. Tiny MCE Advanced, Webflow has a CMS editor. Google XML sitemaps, we build the sitemap for you. All you have to do is submit it to Google. Uh, Updraft Plus WordPress backup plugin. Well, I mean, AWS backups. All right. All right. So lastly, let's talk about ease of use for your clients. Now, I, I've i heard of uh, calls where it takes about an hour or so for a freelancer to talk to their client and train them on how to maintain their site so they don't break the, the design that they've built for them. But because they the client has complete access to everything, including the design, there are times where it can be broken. Plus, if you have to train them on how to use a plugin, you're probably going to be using terminology using words like um, plugin, module, component, uh, modal. Like, a client shouldn't have to worry about learning a new language. A client should take time to uh, shouldn't have to take much time to learn all that. They should be focused focused on their business, right? So in Webflow, there is a CMS editor, and all you have, to, all your client has to do is click and update something, then press publish. They want to add a new blog post or a new uh, product. They can do that easily from the Webflow CMS. Now, when I uh, create quotes for freelance clients, I always say, okay, you're only going to get 30 minutes of uh, training. And sometimes they're like, whoa, only 30 minutes, why? And I say, if it takes longer than 30 minutes to maintain your site, then something is wrong with the platform, all right? So uh, yeah, those are my thoughts. In the end, Webflow doesn't uh, solve for 100% of the use cases out there, all right? It, it solves for a lot, and Webflow still has a, a long way to go in order to get near 100%, but it's getting easier and easier to sell Webflow to clients. So yeah, that's about it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think about this video in the comments below. Are you uh, are you successful in bringing people from WordPress over to Webflow? I'd like to know what you've done. Uh, and if you have some comments about what I've just talked about, yeah, yeah, I'd like to know. I want that feedback, all right? Uh, thank you so much. Don't forget, don't forget to click on the subscribe button, the like, and the notification bell. Follow me on Twitter at The Pixel Geek. Thank you very much. I'll see you in the next one. And as always, make the web beautiful together. See ya.